And this one's a universe size comparison. We'll just start. Hmm. Okay, here's one I recognize, our moon. Hmm. Not sure about two out of three of these. I think one of the only things I remember about the eight immediate planets in our solar system is that Jupiter's the biggest. At least that's what I was taught in the thousands, but even then, Pluto was taught as a planet, so... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe things have changed. There we are. Jupiter. So what's next? Our sun? No, Proxima Centauri. Okay, I have a quick question. What is it about Circe? That's Game of Thrones. Ceres. What was the second one? Callisto. Kepler 22b and now Proxima Centauri that discounts them from being taught along with the solar system the planets in our solar system. Now that I heard that question out loud, it sounds a bit daft. Could it be that not all of those four were planets or they're not in our solar system rotating around our sun? Maybe not. I don't know. If you know, please let me know. I'm going to preface the rest of this video with that planets, stars, astronomy, so far out of my depth. But now that's going to be a question for Google because I'm curious. Oh wow, that's so cool. All right, there's our sun. Wow, 2.5 plus Arcturuses fit inside of a Rigel. Rigel, Riggle. Supermassive black hole, Muse. If you know, you know. I need to read about these nebulas. Where's 
some milk you left. Oh, okay. Well, that was a lot of guess. Just void. Have you ever seen Enter the Void? Gus Badenoi? That's a trippy movie. Observable universe. Okay. Do you ever watch something on a subject that you're not very familiar with and think, new interest unlocked? <laughs> That's what that was for me. So, thanks for sending this one in. It's from a channel called Harry Evett. I don't know what else he has, but as always, I'll link it down in the bio so you can check out if he has any more videos that might interest you. This is one of those things that as a kid, I probably would have thought, mm, pass. But as an adult, I am definitely interested. And I know I always say this after space related videos, but it is so humbling for me to watch. I'm just here on earth, so small. And what's out there, I honestly don't know. Will we ever really know in our lifetimes? And then I get inundated with existentialist thoughts, Fermi paradox questions. So if you have anything to add to this video, please feel free to do that. I didn't have too much to add. If anything, I have more questions. For example, I understand more or less how they decipher the size of objects so far away. But whenever I look into how large the margin of error must be there. I always find the more complicated answer than I went in for. And then I end up reading people debate what's true and what's complete guesswork. So yeah, some of you may know. Feel free to fill me in on that. And for a literary recommendation, I believe I've already recommended the two books on astronomy that I've read. Um, outside of a class. And that was one by Brian Cox and another by Carl Sagan. So I'm going to link both of those titles down below. If you have any titles of books that you want to recommend to each other, please feel free to do that. In a previous video, I think it was the cat tier list video, someone recommended that I read 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm about 60% of the way through. Therefore, I'm not going to be picking up an astrology, astrology, astronomy book anytime soon. But if you're reading any other interesting books that you want to share the title to, please feel free to do that as well. At this point, I think I should just start a channel where we talk about books. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got. Leave your thoughts on any of this. And thanks for watching with me. Bye. Bye.